Well, hi everyone, those of you that are joining us, welcome. Uh, we're going to wait just for a few more minutes while people are joining at our live stream. Please share this broadcast. Please uh, do start your watch parties. Um, make sure that friends, family, anything that's moving or living can join us. We have got a great evening ahead of us and uh, it's great to have Maria with me. I nearly didn't make it tonight because Steve has gone in hospital again today. So uh, this is really flying by the seat, but we're glad tonight to have a very special guest with us. Uh, Maria, do you want to say anything before we get going? Do you want to say just, hi? Or? Just that, no. Hi, everybody. I'm. Um... I'm doing okay. I know many of you know I've had a blood clot, which is not ideal, but I'm doing great. So if I've, the computer moves up and down, it's just because I keep moving it just to adjust the position. But no, I'm all good. Looking forward to an assessment centre on Thursday and an interview on Friday to see whether I'm going to actually make that new grade of chief superintendent. We'll see. Yeah. But Maria, and I'm trusting him. But Maria's <laughs> believe in the word. And uh, as it says in the word, believe uh, believe in the Lord your God, but believe in the prophets and you shall prosper. And tonight yeah. we have an amazing guest. We, we are thrilled that Jennifer Leclerc is joining us all the way from Florida. Jennifer, nice. this is an honor for us. We can't believe that you're actually with us in real time. And uh, Maria, we were just talking before we got on, on live about Jennifer. Do you want to say what you were yeah, well, I, we, obviously, we've got Jennifer's books. We've heard Jennifer speak live at our um, place in, in Burton-on-Trent. But Jennifer is an amazing gift to the body of Christ. What I love about her is the warfare mantle that she carries, but also the prophetic mantle, hearing, being authentic, and being somebody who is a real voice into the body of Christ right now that doesn't really care what anybody thinks about her. This is why I like her, actually, because I think, I think that's a real straw that I'm like that, and that's why I can't get promoted in the police very quickly sometimes, because actually I'm rather more bothered about being true to who God's called me to be than what anybody else thinks. And one of the things that I really feel strongly about Jennifer is that integrity. She is who God's called her to be. She isn't going to deviate. She's not a man pleaser. She's not a people pleaser. She, her business is about following what the Holy Spirit is saying. And I really love that about her because, you know, people can be swayed and influenced and all the other things. And that does never come through. Jennifer is who she makes out to be. Yeah, we just love it, love it, love it that we're in relationship. But yeah. more than that, that you are trailblazing. Yeah. And I want to, I want to kick off by, you know, the question that all the prophets are answering is, What's the thing you're hearing at the moment that you think is all the big picture for the for the whole thing? Is there anything you want to kick off with in that? And then we'll get to some detail. Yeah, sure. You know, I believe I'll give you the end before the beginning. <laughs> I, I, I'm contending for a great awakening, a third great awakening in America, but an awakening, a revival in the nations. And so that's what we're contending for. I do believe it's going to get a little hairy before then. Obviously, it doesn't take a profit to see that this coronavirus issue is still a very much a present reality. I'm here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and they're talking about, you know, rolling us back, which is what in America means putting us back with restrictions, restaurants restricted, stay at home orders because of we're, we're the epicenter now. Um, I heard just this morning that Spain, Italy, uh, yeah. other countries in Europe are beginning to see what they think is the second wave. So it doesn't take a profit to see that this particular world crisis is not over. And so the Lord told me in 2007, he woke me up at midnight and I don't like to be woken up at midnight, but if the Lord does it, that's okay. <laughs> so he woke me up at midnight and he told me there was a third great awakening coming to America that would spill over into other nations. And so I'm believing for that. But he also told me back in 2007 that it would get a lot darker before the light shined again. So you guys know me. I'm not a doom and gloomer. Don't believe right. in it. I believe God is, is, a, is a glorious warrior God. He's a redemptive God. Uh, he works all things together for good. I believe some of what we're seeing, you know, that's going wrong is just we're reaping from what we've sown as nations. Yeah. We've made mistakes. We've done things um, incorrectly. Uh, you know, and we, we, we bring some of this stuff on ourselves. And so 
and there's been pandemics before, so it is what it is. But but in this, God is 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 bringing even many revivals, M I N I, in America. Uh, in this, God is bringing prodigals home. Yeah. In this, God is 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 setting the stage for a great harvest, and mm-hmm. so. I just want to encourage everybody not to get sucked up in the media headlines. Yes. There are a lot of half truths and, and see the bigger picture because the bigger picture is awakening and revival. Absolutely. Yeah. And we've seen even in our small corner here, we've seen new salvations, people coming in, we've seen prodigals return. So we, we're with you. And one of the things for us, having a local congregation, though a, a, a ministry that's reaching further is we don't want to go back to an old paradigm you know this is a this is a real opportunity for breaking out into new things now you you have the awakening house of prayer which is just popping up all over new hubs people can get involved with that but you also have a regular congregation now jennifer how how does it work in the ministry that you are heading up over there yeah so uh, awakening house of prayer was first a house of prayer we birthed the church a couple of two, three years ago, and uh, we're we're growing. We're here. The interesting thing about my region is most churches are closed. Um, the mega churches are closed. Um, most every church in the region is closed. Uh, but what's happened, which is really potent and really powerful, is that because most churches are closed, people who are extremely hungry, they're coming to our church. So even some of our normal people aren't there, but the people that are coming, they are so hungry and on fire for God that we're seeing miracles. We're seeing people, people getting delivered, just sitting in their chair, people getting uh, healed with nobody touching them because of the atmosphere of hunger. And so I like it, you know, it's going to (laughs) be, I'm I'm hoping that, you know, God keeps bringing the hungry ones. We've got this, this, this whole group of millennials and uh, on Sunday, we celebrated my birthday on Sunday. And um, I said, you know, how many, if you're a millennial, run up to the front. Half the church is millennials, which is incredible. They have so yeah. much intensity and I imparted wisdom to them. So yeah, we have a local church expression. We wow. have a few, few of our houses of prayers actually became churches. Wow. Um, but yeah, I mean, God is really moving in the hunger. Yeah. Wow. So how, how do they shift from, from what they're doing in terms of focusing on prayer to becoming a local congregation? Does it just mean that they meet at a different time or they're meeting more needs? How does that transition happen? Yeah, I, I think with us, you know, we were not interested in competing with other churches. We just wanted to pray for the city. But we would do a training on on sunday afternoons because we have to equip people to pray you have to equip people to war um you can't just people were coming in they didn't even know how to pray so we would do equipping and uh people would come every week and after like a couple of years they said well this is our church we don't go anywhere else and so we said well we got to take care of these people got to get some pastors because you know god knows i'm not a pastor and uh, <laughs> you know i i tend to bite but um you know, pastors, you know, pet you and prophets bite. So, you know, but uh, it just sort of happened organically. We never start out that way. Um, Most of our, we have like 115 prayer hubs now. Um, I don't know, about six or seven in Europe. Most of them are in the US, some in New Zealand, Australia. Um, Those are just for the purpose of prayer. And that is taking off rapidly because people are realizing that we need to pray more and more. So that's what I love a lot about, you know, when I visited your ministry, I mean, you have that whole, you know, war room there. I mean, that so impacted me. I'm like, man, I wish we had the space for this. And now we do. So we've got our flags and everything. We've got a map and everything. And so, <laughs> yeah, you you inspired us. Oh, great. <laughs> That's good to hear. Yeah, we can't wait to get back in. In fact, we've got plans for some of our team to, to go back in because we've been on severe lockdown here, you know, yeah. and it's been hard. Um, but we we are making those plans now amongst the – we've got clearance from our – our trustee board that we're we're ready to uh, to make waves there. So Maria, have you got some questions for Jennifer? Well, really, I suppose one of the the key things that you know, in the midst of uh, the kind of chaos that's going on globally, yeah, I I definitely hear as well. There's an awakening. I really appreciated yours and Dutch's response to some of the quite negative, not negative, yeah, negative dreams, etc. That yeah. were playing out and I don't think it's the uh the fact that maybe the dreams are unreal because we can see what's playing out in Portland right now in the states and some of that anarchist kind of context you know for me in the policing world when I look at where where we're going in terms of the whole diversity inclusion 
race issues, you know, which are really valid issues. It's almost like the the enemy wants to seek to polarize uh, people uh, in this moment when God actually wants to invade with his spirit so that people can actually get saved. But in the midst of the chaos, I guess, in terms of the church's positioning, the church needs to rise up to a new level of legislating into that context rather than being passive and watching the context, I guess. So uh, how's that working in the States in terms of the, the movement and intercession and the and dismantling? Because, you know, your, your books are great around dismantling those demonic strategies that are controlling that. You cannot say that what's going on in Portland is not motivated demonically because it yeah. is. Yeah. Well, you know, there's different sort of probably the same there. You know, I've spent a lot of time in England. I was there every month last year, sometimes for 10, 12 days at a time. Um, and so there's different kinds of intercessors in America. There's different kinds of intercessors there. Um, and we have a lot of the sort of soaking houses of prayer in, in the States where they just want to soak. Yeah. They, 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 just want to soak. Um, we have like 42 houses of prayer in Florida and most of them are soaking houses. And so um, that's not going to cut it in this season. Uh, you know, I, we can do that, but we need to war first. And yeah. so, you know, this is, everybody talks about, this is the decade of the decree. And the Lord showed me that there are some demons that will not move uh, without a decree. The decree makes the devil flee. Okay. And so, you know, I'm, I'm seeing that more people are interested in learning about spiritual warfare. We just concluded a spiritual warfare series at my church. It was based on this book here, 101 uh, Tactics for Spiritual Love Warfare. It. You know, oh, Jen, let, let me tell so, you about that yeah. book. We <laughs> yeah. have taken all of our intercessors through that book. Yeah. It, and well, we've taken them through several of your books, but that book is one of the classics. Everybody, you need that. You can get it on our website yeah. from our bookstore yeah. yeah. or yeah. you can go on Amazon. Fantastic book, Jennifer. Yeah, because people, what, what we've learned is, is that, you know, people don't know how to, how to, they don't know how to, they, they, they plead with God and that's a kind of intercession. I mean, Abraham pleaded with God, Moses pleaded with God, Daniel pleaded with God, and that's good. But we have to be militant in times like this. Uh, we have to be aggressive. And I, I see more people are catching that. I mean, you know, people like Cindy and Dutch, and they, they understand all that. You know, James Gall, they were the mothers and fathers of this sort of prophetic intercession movement in America. Uh, but we're seeing more and more people really hungry to learn about spiritual warfare. And that's a good sign because they're, they're recognizing that the kind of prayers we've been praying have 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 not pushed back the darkness that we're seeing. And, and here we are. We've got to get aggressive. So uh, we're doing that. Awakening House of Prayer. As a matter of fact, we're adopting a nation every week um, to pray right. for with the prayer hubs. This week, actually, we're adopting England. So uh, last week we adopted um, uh, Taiwan. Uh, but because it's not just our nation, you know, intercessors today, God is giving them nations that aren't necessarily their nation to pray for. Um, because there's a lot of stuff happening in America, but there's a lot of stuff happening in South Africa. There's a lot of stuff happening in England. So um, I think people are waking up to the need for spiritual warfare. That was kind of like my long way of saying that. Well, we've been we've been warring really since mm -hmm. Martha, Lucia, she released yeah. a war mantle on us in 2000 and what was it, Maria? 2002? Yeah, 2002. That's when we went. We, to, we uh, were labelled, one time we were labelled as like, you're all about war, you're all about war, when yeah. really we we were just hungry for more of God and we were passionate. I think the, the, uh, the accusation was more, you know, you're more passionate than we are because it sounded like we were all about war, but we were just on it you know we've got yeah. to deal with this enemy and um we've never we've never apologized for being a warring body but we love the fact that you are really are breaking through new new ground for the body and a lot of churches a lot of individuals are coming into their authority maria and i've just done a prayer webinar we're in in our uh fourth one fourth one this week of a four-part series on on um really raising up that level of intercession and spiritual warfare and we we're amazed at how many people good intercessory people but just haven't stepped into that that ability to take the enemy hmm. in that way and uh, we've used a lot of your material jennifer so keep it coming please <laughs> absolutely thank you thank you for that
Yeah, 101, what is it? Just tell us again that one. I think I might have it on a... on a uh, 101 Tactics for Spiritual Warfare. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it, it took me months to teach that. You know, we have two services, so I was able to teach it in the afternoon. And and uh, it took me months to teach it because we went deep. But now, I mean, people people are equipped. They're ready to fight. It was perfect timing. So it was good. But we, we've all got to get better equipped. We can always learn more about prayer. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We're trying to provide places where people can, especially through this, we're having a lot of uh, Zoom calls where intercessors can come and in smaller groups, we have breakout rooms, they can actually begin to stretch a little bit because they haven't had it in their churches. They, right. They've got the hunger inside and their willingness, but they just haven't had the company, the company of people to run with. So we're providing that uh, uh, more than ever now, more than ever. And can't wait to go back in, like I just said. So, Maria, any more? Yeah. So, the, I guess, I guess one of the other questions I've got then is just around. Hey, Jenny, why am I the doing the questions tonight? Am I the? Am I the I'm the thinking question? while you're talking. I'm thinking of the next one. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the other question I want to ask is really in terms of God's times and seasons. I'm sure you know that we are really um knitted into the whole times and seasons issachar anointing where we are right now in church history and you know we know that there's going to be a great awakening before jesus comes back i'm not going to ask you when i think i'm not going to ask you when you think jesus might be coming back because <laughs> that's not a question but in terms of that season you know we've looked at the timeline the you know jerusalem israel being established as a nation jerusalem being established as part of israel because it was restored to israel in 67 and that whole sense of when jesus talks about this generation from shall not pass away what what's your perspective on on that kind of piece because i think that is a valid you know there's a lot of people asking that question right now with all the acceleration around you know one world currency one world government mm -hmm. some of the, what they're trying to enforce through coronavirus you know that that whole thing around vaccines we you know, mm -hmm. again, I'm not going to get into the whole conspiracy theory thing, but there are there is a, a, a culmination of events that are pointing to an acceleration of, of end times, too. Yeah, I think things are accelerating. I think two years ago. Um, so I'm on that apostolic council, prophetic elders. Yeah. And two years ago, I think it was two years ago. It might have been three. I'd have to look back. Uh, it was two years ago. The Lord, I prophesied there in the council that we are we we are in a time of accelerated acceleration, and so that's well, that's like almost like warp speed. So, and we've been studying the end times. Uh, I have a virtual life group we started on Tuesday nights, and we've been studying the end times. We've been really digging into this and talking about it because, like you said, everybody's asking. Um, you know, um, you guys know IHOP and Mike Bickle, and yeah, yeah. Um, I, I believe along those lines he okay. has said that he believes that that we could be in the generation of the lord's return yeah. uh, that some people that are alive today we'll um, could see the return of the lord and i tend to believe that way now the rub or the the interesting thing is every generation has always True. thought jesus is coming yeah. back soon um here's what i know though um you know the, the those first trumpets haven't blown yet no. So, so, so we've got all these people online right now that are talking about, oh, Jesus coming back. It's it's going to be well, tomorrow. It's, yeah, tomorrow, <laughs> October first, whatever. And yeah. that's not new. No. The first trumpet hasn't even blown yet. So, we'll recognize when the first trumpet blows, and when it does, then we yeah. know we've got seven years you know, before before yeah. the yeah. So I don't know, but we're we're getting we're getting closer, and I believe it could be in our lifetime. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's great. That was a very succinct answer. Very succinct. Yeah, but I like it, Jenny. Yeah. I mean, uh, is there is there anything, Jennifer, that you feel that you know to help intercessors that are on here tonight, um, really stir them up? Is there anything you want to pray for them or to 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 say to them? Because we're 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 a company here that are really after. The hem of his garment, the the pressing in. We want to see the enemy ousted, and that no holes barred. You know what would be your your hot word for intercessors? Yeah, no, that's that's great. I, I you know, God is not looking for more apostles and prophets right now. God's looking for more intercessors and evangelists. 
And so, you know, you've probably heard it said in the past that, you know, history ha is in the hands of the intercessors. And, and I think that what we have had a tendency to do is press, press, press. There's some kind of crisis, some kind of world event, uh, some kind of issue. And we press, 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 press until we get the breakthrough. And then we all back up and we say, look at what a good job we did. We really defeated the enemy. We wore it all the way through. And then we get a little lazy again. If I can be honest, you know, we, we it, 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 let's face it. When you're in a fight, when you're in a battle, when you're pressing, when you're plowing, I mean, once you get the breakthrough, you're tired, like, because you've been praying and praying and praying. But instead of just sort of taking a break or handing the baton to another prayer group to keep the intercession steady, we're backing off and then we have another crisis. For example, President Trump, all the intercessors in America were praying, praying, praying that yeah. Trump would get elected. Trump, he got elected. And now guess what? Now it's like, a, you know, we all backed off. I mean, I, I don't know an intercessor. Maybe there's some, I'm sure there's some. I don't know many intercessors who could say they prayed as hard for the past four years that they did for the year prior to his election. And so that's what we're seeing is we're seeing intercessors, you know, we take our foot off the gas. And when we take our foot off the gas, then we see that the enemy gains ground. So I would say to the intercessors, man, build groups, build cells and let, let some of you take a rest. But don't, you know, always have the Bible says in Leviticus, the fire on the altar shall never go out. And so when we let the fire go out, that's when the enemy comes in. And we've got to be a people that just won't back off and just keep on praying. So that's one of the things I'd like to say to intercession. I mean, have you noticed that, that there's like, you know, after the breakthrough, we, we, we relax? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree with that. We've got a, a question from one of our team. Could Jennifer expand a little bit more on the adopting a nation for prayer? And, and that might give us some keys of how we can flow with what you're doing or even how the Lord might use us for the for the nations that are, are in, in our hearts at the moment. So that can you yeah. expand? Yeah. yeah. So because we have 115 uh, prayer hubs, um, we thought it would be very powerful if we could get all the prayer hubs praying for a single nation in a week. And so, you know, I pray about it. I scan the news you know, it's a combination of the two. I, I look at the news every day. And if I see there's something going on in South Africa, you know, it strikes my heart, we'll adopt South Africa. Uh, England this week, there was no particular reason other than the Lord said, adopt England this week. So what I do is uh, we create prayer points and we send them out to all our intercessors, uh, the leaders of those 115 groups. And we all focus on that one nation. And then we look for the breakthrough. And you know, the breakthrough doesn't always come immediately after the intercession, but you know when something is shifted in the spirit. And so it's about that unified prayer because the Bible says where, where there's a unity, God commands a blessing. So that's one way that we, we bring a unified prayer to the body. I like that very much. And um, when you send out your prayer points, is that to um, do you just do that on on social media or do you do that specifically to your leaders that are appointed? Yeah, we send it to the leaders, but we also put it on social media, because even if you're not part of the movement, the whole idea is to facilitate prayer. You know, I, you know, I don't care who you're praying with or what network you're part of. I just want to see you pray. Absolutely. I like it. That's that's our heart is just that all over. I hope you'll come back when when all this lockdown is over. I hope you'll be able to visit and see how we've developed our, our war room because it's a, a little bit different now since you were last with us. But um, that's good. Let's see if there's any more um, any more questions. Anybody else got a question? I'm just scouring the the uh, da -da, da -da. lots of lots of people saying how they they're tracking with you and they they're always with you uh that's great well no more questions. somebody somebody's asked what time your uh, prayer meetings are held uh in terms of british summertime because they obviously want to dial yeah. in yeah so we have uh, i have morning prayer at 6 a.m every morning so that's uh about 11 a.m uh england time yeah. And then our yeah, prayer yeah. meetings at Awakening House of Prayer are streamed live Monday at six o'clock. So that'd be midnight, or that'd be eleven o'clock your time. And then Friday nights at seven o'clock, that'd be midnight your time. So uh, that's kind of late, but you can watch our prayer meetings, all the replays uh, on my Facebook page. Um, 
it's uh, facebook.com slash awakening house of prayer. Great. And there's, some, and there's some folks that are saying they do join in uh, your prayer times. Somebody's asking if you feel like President Trump will be reelected. That's a, you know, I mean, I, I think there was a lot of prophetic words about him being reelected. Um, the, the South African guy that has uh, passed away some time ago. What was the guy's name, Jenny, the prophet? You probably know. Jenny, Jennifer LeClaire, you probably know. You two Jennies, it's really difficult. <laughs> Which one? Um, who, who do you mean? Oh, do you mean yeah. um, I know who you mean. Kim, Kim, you mean Kim Clement. Kim, yeah, Kim, yeah. yeah. Kim prophesied, didn't he, about two terms. So, um, but somebody's just asking that question. Yeah, you know what? I, 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 I believe it's in the hands of the intercessors. I mean, there's I been an agree. onslaught against President Trump. Yeah. So I, I believe that's the will of the Lord. But we know that if we don't pray, then we not, yeah. we might not necessarily see the will of the Lord. So it, even you guys over there, pray for the will of the Lord to be done because yeah. the alternative is not good. And we we did, we did, yeah, I can see the alternative is not good at all. It's not even like the alternative is, um, you know, kind of there's anything. <laughs> there's, it's almost like there is nothing good about the alternative, if, if I'm honest. what What confuses me in the UK is that we have people in the church in the UK who think that the alternative is much better than Trump. And that's deception from my perspective, because I don't think they see um, what Trump has stood for in terms of justice, in terms of righteousness. All they see is the sleaze. They don't see his decisions around abortion and all these different kind of things that are really in line with God's word. It's almost like that's covered up to them. It's quite bizarre, really. But mm -hmm. yeah, no, we we prayed very specifically, didn't we, Jenny? We did. Uh, yeah. when, when we were we were overt about it. We, we were, were yeah, we were we were overt and criticised. And for yeah, it. and we lost friends over it. But because you know, when when you this is one of the things with the church, the body of Christ in England that we don't like is <laughs> there's a lot of middle ground, and you know, you're when when we talk about. Uh, people of your caliber, Jennifer, you can't sometimes where when it comes to kingdom issues, we're not dealing in any gray areas. It's black or white. Now, we have to choose our battles and we have to choose our ground. I know that. But, you know, Jesus, is, Jesus didn't come and just say, uh, have it how you like, folks. He he came against everything that that was not right. And. Um, I, I, we we are pretty black and white, and we don't we don't. Sometimes we're not liked for that. We we like to know if we're praying something. We want to see the exposure of darkness. We want to see those things overturned. And you're not afraid of that, are you, Jennifer? With what you've been through in your life, you no. you've gone through some pretty tough stuff that's caused you to have like that face like flint. That truth is truth, whatever way you look at it. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we're either going to stand on the side of the Lord or we're going to we're going to stand on the side of the enemy. There's only two sides. It is black and white. And I you know, I haven't built I didn't even want to be in ministry number 1. <laughs> I'm not afraid to lose what has been built because I'm not the one who built it. Yeah, I worked hard. Yeah, I prayed hard. Uh, but I'm not the God is the one who raised me up. And so if he raised me up, then nobody can take me down. Okay. And that's why I'm not concerned about it. I have yeah. to stand before the Lord and every intercessor, when God wakes you up in the middle of the night, you got to stand before the Lord and give an account for what you've said and what you've done and, and your assignment. You want to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. So I'm not concerned about what people think because I'm only concerned about what he thinks. And, you know, it just, that, that's just the bottom line. Yeah. Just what I said at the beginning when introducing you, because it's really clear that's where you stand. Mm -hmm. And having read your book as well, we used your book on our prophetic development intensive. We did um, we The did Making of a Prophet. Making of a Prophet. Brilliant, really brilliant book for anybody. Yeah. We, we we did a, a nine month uh, development course for emerging prophets, and we gave them we bought the books, gave them three books that they had to r read and then write. Um, a review on on that uh, of what they'd actually learned and your book was the first one that we made everybody read and do an assignment on because it was just key and very clear 
And I think that's part of the gifting. You know, the Lord's made you very clear in your communication. And, um, and you know, we want to be uh, a company that, you know, you can count on. You know, we're in your corner. So we're pressing out Jennifer LeClaire Ministries and saying, you know, you take more ground because we know that's we're coming in behind. And, um, yeah, we've used your material lots and we sell your your all of your books in our bookstore. People can know that they can get get them from us. So keep it coming. Have you got anything at the moment, Jennifer, that you're writing? Anything that's on its way? Um, you know, this just came out. Um, and that noise, thank thankfully, finally stopped. Uh, this just came out just recently. It's called Prophetic Protocols and Ethics. And Cindy Jacobs had said um, last November that we have this generation of prophets and prophetic people who don't know some of the protocols that the three of us know. They've not been trained. And so what happens is you get a lot of stuff on Facebook that should never have been released. You get people releasing dreams from the second heaven instead of you know, understanding that's the enemy's plan. Um, you get people uh, just, uh, you know, not letting the prophets, Jen Bob says two or three, so this is, um, this just came out in response to, actually I was working on it before Cindy said that, but I rushed it through. And I think because intercessors, let's, let's just take it, let's break it down a little bit. Intercessors, uh, every intercessor I know, every really person who gives themselves over to intercession, um, they are prophetic. Why? because they've given themselves to prayer and prayer is a dialogue. And yeah. so if you're an intercessor, you've got to learn, well, you don't have to be a prophet. If you're an intercessor, you've got to learn how to navigate that prophetic realm, or you could step in a landmine. You could actually, you know, come into agreement with some things the enemy's doing and, 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 and not know, not know that you did it. We call those witchcraft prayers. And so there's a time that, you know, as intercessors, as watchmen, uh, you're going to, have times where you receive prophetic intelligence and you don't know what to do with it. And if you release that prophetic intelligence, what you heard from the Lord to the entire body of Christ, you're liable to scare people. And then instead of having people pray, they go hole up with, you know, some guns and some ammunition and a <laughs> stockpile of food. And so these are, these are things that are happening right now in the body of Christ. You're yeah. seeing it. Um, yeah. There's like a, like a dream factory right now. My, my inbox is blowing up with people, I don't even know who they are. I mean, they're just regular everyday Joes that have a ministry and they're all dreaming of Armageddon. They're all dreaming that it's the end of the world. They're all dreaming that America is going to you know, blow up in a nuclear. I mean, and so what's happening is, is that they're seeing into the second heaven, they're seeing the plans of the enemy or they're watching too much secular media. Yeah. And so th it's not even God, it's their troubled soul. And so intercessors, we do need to be informed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's this concept yeah. of praying the news. Yeah. We need to be informed. But what I do is I watch, I look at the headlines on Google News in the morning, seven o'clock, get off my prayer call. I, I want to know what's going on in the world, but I do not want to be spoon fed the liberal media's agenda. Uh -huh. And so I don't read the story uh, very rarely. Uh, and so I, this is what's happening. It's, a, it's yeah. almost like a, an M-I-N-I -I mini crisis in the body of Christ, a mini crisis in the prophetic movement where we have all these people ha coming out of the woodworks with you know, doom and gloom dreams. And then what's happening is you get enough of that out there and the young intercessors, not the seasoned ones, but the young intercessors will get very discouraged because they'll think it's it's over. Our prayers aren't going to matter. So I don't know if you're seeing this kind of stuff in England, but this is the hot thing in America right now. Well, we're, so I, I, that is so hugely helpful um, for a number of reasons. Number one, yes, we are seeing it, but not in the same measure that you are in the States. What we're seeing here is actually we get we get all of the what is playing out in the states we get we get it so you know people are sending around the dreams that are happening in the states on whatsapp really interesting the guy that recently the one that had the dream and that played out and then then he had the other dream you know i actually sent straight away sent an, a message around our group to say just press pause because you know i've heard jennifer and i've heard dutch both say Let's bring some perspective to what's going on. But actually what you describe completely makes sense around, yes, of course, people are seeing the different things in the second heaven. 
and dreaming it and watching too much of the media. I mean, I do you know, after about three weeks of COVID here, I turned the TV off. I do the same as you. I look on the headlines, what's in the news. And if there's something I want to read, like I did read an article today and it was to do with the fact that BA, British, um, black and Asian and Muslim and ethnic groups in the UK are poorly represented in leadership. That's only because I'm interested in that subject. I read the article. But otherwise, headlines, TV off, because I don't want to be dreaming about stuff that is influenced by what I'm putting in through my eye gate. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is when Jenny and I were teaching our intercessors recently on the webinar, we really made a point around as an intercessor, you will receive revelation and the revelation will be revelation in the second heaven. It will be revelation from the throne of God. And but not always you need to share it. You know, sometimes that is just revelation for you. It does not need to go out. A to the group, B to the world. And actually, if you think it needs to go wider, you need to have a conversation with somebody before you put it out there on Twitter, on Facebook or elsewhere, because it isn't always healthy. So that is um, that really resonates, Jennifer, and is Very really good. I'm sure to the people that are watching tonight. Yeah, we've got another question um, from a friend who is in leadership in the north of England. And he says some of the end times imagery of hanging on through many trials. How does this fit in with the timing of the massive end time harvest? Do you think there'll be a, you know, the the there is going to be the trials and all of that, then the harvest? Or do you think the two thing wor things work together? He's asking this. Carl Roach is asking. You know, I, I feel like the um, uh, Isaiah, there's a scripture in Isaiah about great darkness and great glory happening at the same time. And so, you know, when we get there toward the end, you're going to see great the great darkness and the great glory. It's gross darkness, gross darkness yeah. and glory at the same time. You know, I think this is just like the first fruits. What I've called it with my group is the birth pangs. I think these are some of the birth pangs. Mm -hmm. And you'll know that the end times is getting closer or, or like that, that last part is getting closer and closer when the events become more rapid and more diverse. So, you know, this will happen here. This will happen here. It'll be constant. You, you'll know that it's kind of like when a woman has a baby and, you know, the, 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 the pains come quick, quick, quick. The contractions come quick, quick. That's how you know the baby's going to be born. So I don't think we're there yet. Like I said, I meant to say the seals haven't been taken, but the seals haven't, the, the seals, the trumpets and the bowls, the seals haven't even been broken yet. I don't believe um, people want to talk about the horses and all these things. I don't believe we're there yet, but I think it's going to happen quickly. When it happens, I think it's going to be accelerated. Mm. How do you, um, this, how do you, or what's your response, uh, Jennifer, when you hear prophetic words that you just think are really, not i'm not talking about the flakes i'm talking about you know not every prophet even the ones we love and honor and respect not everyone is hearing the same thing so when you when you hear some opposing prophetic words how do you ha hold them or you know i sometimes as a leader i think you know i know this person and i know that they're not we're not talking about we're not talking about people with wrong motives or we're talking about good people, but they just don't seem to be where I'm sensing. How do you handle that? Do you do you just prophesy what you're hearing and leave it at that? Or how does it – can you help us with the whole – Yeah, it's a tough situation. I heard Patricia King say something that was brilliant. And she said that, you know, there's usually a little nugget of truth, even if most of it's wrong. So, you know, right now we're seeing, we are seeing disagreement in the prophetic movement. Uh, someone online just said, well, somebody said it was going to be gone by Easter. Then they said it was going to, the virus is going to be gone by Pentecost. Uh, it never happened. Um, so, you know, I, I think that maybe it was God's will for it to be gone by Pentecost. Yeah, maybe good. it was God's will for it to be gone by Easter. Um, however, perhaps the intercessors were not praying. I, I, I don't know. I did not hear that it was going to be gone by Easter. I did not hear that it was going to be gone by Pentecost. As a matter of fact, uh, I believe that 2021 is probably going to be hairy as well. I think it could even get worse. Yeah. Some of it depends on intercession and some of it is just already rolling. It's like a snowball. 
And it's like, it, it, you know, it would take the hand of God to stop it because some of this stuff is rolling so fast. So I try not to be judgmental, uh, but then I go back and teach my people, this is what I'm hearing the Lord say. So we judge. I yeah. think that's really important. I'm, I'm, can I just say, Maria, I'm yeah, hearing two things good. there. First of all, I'm, I'm hearing, you know, of course, we don't judge it. Uh, but intercept, sometimes the words are the intention of God, but they don't get fulfilled because the intercessors haven't stepped into that gap. And then the second thing I'm hearing is hear for yourself. Don't just be following someone else's revelation. This, this is really good, Jennifer. Yeah. Very good. So, so also, you know, I, I saw the same comment, Jennifer, and I just replied on there. It's less about negative words and more about the words that we're going to propel that are going to propel people to fulfill God's kingdom purposes. Because the reality is, yeah, we might hear that the enemy, we might hear what the enemy's doing, but actually prophesying what the enemy's doing is not helpful. Actually, revelation about what the enemy's doing should actually fuel us speaking God's word into the situation so we can dismantle the enemy's strategy. And so even if we say, oh, we've identified what the enemy's strategy is in this situation, COVID, lockdown, he's going to lock people up, he's going to stop people doing this, he's going to stop people doing that. Okay, so what's God speaking into that? We might hear that that's what the enemy's plan is, but actually our responsibility is to speak what God's plan is. And actually God's plan into that is always redemptive, as you said at the beginning, is always to bring people to a relationship with him, is always to advance his kingdom of righteousness, joy and peace in the Holy Spirit. So declaring the enemy's mantra in a situation isn't actually going to help the body of Christ. What we need to be doing is getting up into the heavenly places where we're positioned with him to hear what heaven is saying. What is the redemptive plan of God here? And how do we release that into the earth to break the strategy of the enemy? So that's my that's my position. So when people go, oh, well, they might have got it right. Yeah, well, yeah, they might have got it right. But that's because the intercessors, as you said, did not partner with what heaven's purposes were and what heaven's plans were for the situation. Sorry, mm. I get a bit passionate about that. Because I work in a world in, in the police where I see the enemy's plan playing out day after day after day after day you know, the hotspot crime areas, all of that stuff. I we've know. Used, Maria, it's true to say, isn't it, that we've used some of your insight in our, when we've put an assignment together, oh, be yeah. it international assignment, national assignment, wherever we've gone to do a strike, we've used some of your police tactics in in actually under... Yeah. Under, yeah. underneath all of that because yeah. it, it's not a, it's not a dissimilar scenario no. what's on earth no. is playing out what's no. in heaven jennifer we use a lot of police tactics we even use i mean they don't know this in the police but when we do an, a proper like proper strike assignment we use even some of the terminology and the operational planning that i would use in the police because actually it's really good that's how you take the enemy out it's how you take the the bad guy out and yeah it's all biblically based but it helps us with our how we're going to deploy into a situation how we're going to deploy in prayer not yeah. in a religious way but just in a yeah. uh, it's good I've got another there's another question come in here does jennifer feel that prophets and apostles are in agreement about how the church is about to change how is jennifer viewing this yeah I, apparently not um Apparently not. Um, you know, I think that some apostles and prophets were, there's different camps. You know, there, there, there's actually camps in the prophetic movement that don't even believe in spiritual warfare. Uh, they just think we have to just love Jesus. If we just love Jesus, we'll be okay. So that's part of the problem is when you don't have a unif. I was talking with Alveda King, who is the, the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King. And uh, she was sharing with me a dream she had. And I was telling her about how part of the problem in the body of Christ is there's not a unified prophetic voice. It's splintered. And so the people don't know who to listen to. And the Bible says, believe the prophets and you'll prosper, but they don't know which prophet to listen to because there's even like very well-known prophets who don't agree. Yeah. And so, so, it, and, 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 you know, I, I hate that, but it, I see stuff on certain magazines that is released, and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. We're in the middle of a world crisis, and somebody's prophesying that in three days I'm going to have you know, a windfall. And it's like, is that really what we need to hear right now? So there's different levels of the – come on now. There's different <laughs> levels of the prophetic. But I think the major voices um, – some of the major voices aren't even in agreement. 
And, and that's troublesome to me. So no, I don't think that we are in agreement. We wish. Yeah. And one day, <laughs> one day it will happen, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think the Lord's doing a great thing. Uh, one of the things the Lord said to me at the beginning of the pandemic was that there was going to be a great consolidation, collaboration and cooperation. And the, the collaboration is we have... We've had more opportunity through the uh, pandemic to to join together shoulder to shoulder with ministry leaders that we would have only seen from time to time. You know, even on a even on a platform like this, um, you know, Apostle Jane Hammond has been to minister to our place. You have, you know, Matt Sorga has, and okay. lots of people. But but yeah. suddenly we have another opportunity in a different realm to hook together and to see the kingdom break out. And um, we, you know, I was on with Betty King just the other night and Betty hasn't been to our ministry yet, but I've been on two or three programs because of Betty and we've had this, and I think there is collaboration and I think the Lord is doing some things that is eventually going to lead to a greater unity and, um, and oneness in the future. So I'm I'm up for it. I think he's doing a lot through this. Well, I think that through this, it is a real wake up call. And if I can be honest, there are some people who call themselves prophets who are not prophets. No. And in this season, they're being exposed because they continue to put out fluffy words that mean nothing to anybody when the body of Christ is hungry for direction. Yeah. So, but but I think this is a galvanizing moment. This this you know God will work it together for good. And I think there is a lot more dialogue happening now among the major prophets. And we don't all have to agree on every fine detail, but there should be a an overarching agreement about at least the core. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and I do think that's going to come out of this. I do. Yeah. No, totally right. Totally right. I, you know, it's actually broken down some of the, the barriers as well and broken down some of the, um, not the div division, but just it's, it's actually enabled a greater coming together. You know, one of the things I heard at the very beginning was, you know, the world saying you're in lockdown, but I'm actually breaking the limits off. And actually I'm changing the paradigm. And I'm, you know, this is not, this is going to be a time of multiplication, a multiplication that isn't authored by you is authored by me. So, you know, I think God's moved very sovereignly through this. As mm. always, redemptive, redemptive, redemptive. That's mm. his character and nature. So, mm. yeah. And the general fluffy words, like you say, aren't going to move people forward, aren't going to help give people direction. When actually people are getting saved, they need direction. They need that clarity. So, yeah. So are you traveling at the moment, Jennifer? Are you able to move about? How is it for the – I thought you were on a plane the other what? day. Jenny, no, the week before. Why would you travel if you lived in Florida? <laughs> In this, I mean, you know, I'm 50 in September. I was hoping to go to Florida, and at the moment, the best we can hope for might be France. <laughs> yeah, well, um, we just went to uh, Moravian Falls, which was it's a uh, you know, you've probably heard of Moravian Falls, yeah. there's a pool there. I just went up to the mountains to rest. Um, we did a trip to oh. Jacksonville, a trip to Atlanta. Um, but I mean, pretty much, we're, we're, we're staying home, and uh, you know, after being gone so much last year. I'm really just trying to build the local church and it's hard because most of our people are out, but I'm still, I'm still building a community of prayer there. So I, I, I when I was in uh, London last time, I, I, did, I haven't said this to many people, when I was in London last time, it was in March. And as I was walking to the hamburger place, I felt very grieved in my spirit. Like I was just going to cry and weep and I didn't know why. And I told my friend Vanessa, I said, I don't know what's the matter with me. Um, I, we're going to be back next month. And, and I felt like I was never going to see the place again for a long time and come to find out as soon as we left it, you guys were locked down. So that was the grief of the Holy spirit for England, wow. knowing that, and, 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 you know, cause I was going every month. And so I it probably won't even be back there this year. Wow. Yeah. It's hard. It really is hard, but you still, I mean, you're managing to put so much out on social media do you are you feeling like you've got more of um of a reach through this oh yeah because i'll reach you know two or three million a month on facebook where i'm reaching a couple hundred a week at the local church or even when i go to minister at a place 
if they've got a thousand people, it's a it's a minute audience compared to what I can reach on social media. So we're working now on ways to reach the lost through the media. We've got a production team working on that right now because that I'm after souls right now. Prayer and souls. Wow. Wow. Well, listen, if any of your your team or any of them want to be deployed, you know, Chuck sent over um, a young one, one of his young team to help us get our broadcasting all up and running over the last, I think since you were with us, I don't think we were broadcasting when you were with us, were we? No. So, so Chuck sent someone over for just over a year and got us really, we, we started to broadcast our services and got us on that page. And it was great for going into this season because we were already used to the cameras, et cetera, et cetera, where a lot of churches are not. But, but we're now looking in our next season to really have some younger uh, folks help us with the media side. And just, you know, if there's any that want to, to be part of something in England for a season, let's partner, let's get some of this going over you know we would love to do more and uh, and more with you guys because we really believe in what you're doing and if there's anything in the uk that you are establishing please let us know i mean how have you got some hubs already in the uk yeah we've got one in uh greenwich um we've got another one somewhere else in london i can't remember we've got one in germany we've got one in sweden um uh we've got one a few a few others in europe so i'm really trying to reach into europe because so many people have told me don't bother with europe it's dark it's dead um there's no hope and it, that just makes me mad and it's almost like a challenge and i know i i'm one person right but it's almost like a challenge i'm like oh yeah well you know but god has called me to europe first england then europe you know first england because i'm like 98 percent british by yeah. dna so first England and Europe. So I'm really trying to connect with with uh, more leaders there like yourself and others. Uh, one of my prayer hub leaders from um, Greenwich was uh, in France prayer walking. And I said, pray for a, for a hub leader in France. And then today someone contacted us from France. So, oh, brilliant. yeah, it, so it's, you know, I would live there if I could. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm trying to connect more and more with you. So we're praying for Europe fervently. Uh, our church is full of European flags on the walls and, and my heart is really there with you guys. I love my nation. Don't get me wrong, but my heart is really there with you guys. So I'm, I'm just really trying to connect with a lot of the, the folks there and, and just interview them, put them on my platform, let them tell the Americans, you know, you know, why we should be praying and help stoke those fires. So fab, fab. It sounds great. Sounds really good. So we'll 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 definitely stay connected and and we'll be tracking with you guys. Um, do you want to pray for us? Pray for the intercessors that are on this stream, Jennifer. Just before we finish off, that would be really great. Everybody, get ready because we're going to receive a great anointing. Um, we just honour the gift that Jennifer is, and we want you to receive tonight whilst you're on this stream. Jenny, just, just before we do that, so I think it was Narinda, but I can't see it in the um, questions on Facebook. But he was asking about what, what specifically Jennifer's teams have been praying for the UK. Oh, can Jennifer share any prayer points for the UK, especially since Can will be praying yeah. for the nation on Friday? I don't that's know that one. Yeah. Yeah, let me see here. It's, it's on my Instagram. I've got it here. I can tell you what it is. Yep. So when did I find it? So God's will to be done with regard to the tensions between England and Scotland. Oh, yeah. um, victory over the coronavirus in England, which is obvious. Revival. Um, apathy, praying against apathy and lukewarmness. Uh, for the gospel to run swiftly uh, in England. For a smooth Brexit transition. There's, uh, you all know there's still a lot of hubbub around oh, yeah. that. Uh, the knife crimes. It's just you know ongoing. I, we did work there in Croydon. Uh, for the better part of last year and people were getting stabbed down the street so the, um, just on the knife crime thing um yeah that is a massive focus the violent yeah. violent crime under 25s big big massive. It's, it's yeah and young people carrying knives because other young pe people carry knives and that's how it just keeps playing out it's a vicious a vicious circle but they're carrying knives because they're frightened of being stabbed by somebody else carrying a knife so terrible scenario it's 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 really bad so you know there's just there's a lot more there it's on my instagram it's on my facebook page repentance pray for the parliament some of them are, are really rather obvious but sometimes when you put things down in a prayer point black and white it helps yeah. people to focus yeah so yeah we're fervently praying for england this week um all of our hubs around the world so 
we're standing with you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Please pray for us. Sorry, All right. No. So, Father, we just thank you. I thank you for, for the nation of England, for the United Kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for the, for for Jenny Watson and her husband. We bless him as he's uh, recovering there. And, and we just bless the nation of England. And we bless your prayer network. And we bless the parliament. And I decree and declare that England's destiny shall be fulfilled. And I break the powers of every assignment against England. No. And I call on the intercessors even now and I call you I put a demand on the anointing that you carry as an intercessor for the Lord Jesus Christ and I say to you rise up in your authority I say to you rise up in the boldness of Christ the righteous are as bold as lions I say begin to decree a thing and it shall be established I say rise up and push back the darkness and God has given you the keys to the kingdom and I just even see in the spirit right now the Isaiah 22 22 key and he's getting it he's putting it in your hand you're going to open doors and shut doors in your nations even at the gates in Jesus name and I release an impartation of boldness in Jesus name and I release a prophetic anointing over you that you would hear clearly and see rightly in Jesus name amen uh Amen. Amen. We receive it. We receive Amen. it. Now, that's wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, and we've got many people that follow us and are aligned with our ministry. And uh, we just want to say thank you to those that sow. You know how to do that. The purpose of bringing Jennifer on tonight was not to fundraise, but I want you all to know that we will be uh, ministering uh, financially to Jennifer. We will be sending you a gift, Jennifer, because you, you, your ministry is just awesome and we want to honour you for just, your, you know, being here. Right. It, we're not paying you yeah. for this. We are saying you're good ground. Yeah, right. You are really good ground. And so if anybody does want to um, to sow into the ministry, then you can do that. You know how to do that. Um, Jennifer, it's been an absolute joy and privilege and uh, we hope you'll come again on here if we are locked down for any other length of time. Steve, sorry he couldn't be here. He would have said hi. Because when Jennifer came over that first time, um, Steve brought you, when you were coming back from the airport, didn't he take you somewhere, took you somewhere nice to eat? Bakewell, Bakewell, didn't you have Bakewell? Yes, yeah. that's right, we did. <laughs> so uh, he's gone into hospital again today he's not doing so well so um but he wishes to be remembered to you so we'll say good night to everyone maria do you want to say anything to our viewers and bless them well yeah just be blessed and just be moving forward take every bit of territory you can is what i say yeah don't let don't let the negativity that is around right now dominate your thinking because actually with all with God all things are possible and you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you so you know we're the ones that should be setting the bar right now and we should be the ones that are reaching out and bringing people that message of hope and salvation yeah and and we want you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might don't hold back keep pressing right. forward and and you know you're gaining ground every prayer is a powerful weapon every prayer is heard and every prayer is filling those bowls and so i i just appreciate what jennifer said about intercession intercessors have to be and are prophetic because they're pressing for that revelation lord what do you want what's on your heart and so uh, we want to bless you and say a rise up in your prophetic anointing, rise up in your intercessory anointing, and let's move together as a company. It's been a pleasure and a joy. We'll see you all again, and uh, we'll say bye-bye for now. Thank you, Jennifer. Hey, guys. I have good news about our prayer movement, Awakening Prayer Hubs. Well, we've made it a little easier for you to gather. We know that not all of you can gather in a church or even in a home. 
We've got prison prayer hubs as well, but not all of you are in prison ministry. And so we have now made a way, we call them e-hubs. Those of you who want to have groups on Facebook to gather intercessors and pray, those of you who want to pray on the phone or by some other digital means, maybe it's a WhatsApp group, maybe it's a, some other digital platform that you all like to use. We still want to facilitate that. We still want to cover that. We still want to help you get gather and mobilize and train prayer warriors, intercessors, watchmen, you name it. We're here for you. I want you to go to awakeningprayerhubs.com and find out more about our e-hubs. There's a lot of videos there that you can watch about the prayer movement, questions and answers that many people have about prayer and how to host a prayer meeting. All of that's there for you anytime you want, but we want to connect with you at a deeper level. We want to be able to go with you where neither one of us have gone before in the prayer movement and really begin to break down the barriers of buildings and walls and go digital awakening prayer hubs the e-hubs are there for you go check it out let us know if you have questions my heartbeat is to facilitate prayer and a prophetic life in the nations of the earth and let's face it can't have a prophetic life without prayer awakeningprayerhubs.com i'll see you there